So the big news overnight for the fighting game fans out there, Dead or Alive 6 has been confirmed and the team at IGN actually had a chance to get some hands-on time with it. They've done a big report over on their website, which you can of course go and check out. And I guess the biggest news from it, or the, the most obvious thing, is that this game is an incredibly uh, big step up from Dead or Alive 5. Dead or Alive 5 is the one that you're seeing here on the screen in front of you, and if you go and have a look at the Dead or Alive 6 trailer immediately after this, you will see a noticeable, a noticeable enhancement in uh, the player character, graphics, the environments, everything. It just looks like a next-gen game, and that makes sense, since... Dead or Alive 5 was originally a PS3 one, so while it was enhanced for PlayStation 4, it was only enhanced, whereas the Dead or Alive 6 game is obviously natively designed for PS4. And that's a good thing, and I'm certainly very excited about it as a huge fan of Dead or Alive. Uh, I will be buying that obviously day one and playing the ever-living heck out of it. But there is some controversy, I guess, or some discussion or some concern that fans have that... Uh, one of the elements that Dead or Alive is, of course, most famous for has been toned right down, and that is, of course, the sexualization. In fact, the director of the game actually said to IGN, and I'll read the quote out directly, that, um, that they, they've deliberately de turned down on the sexualization. So the quote was, We wanted to make a more cool and mature Dead or Alive this time, and to that end we made a conscious decision to make the characters less sexualized. Okay, so fair enough, and uh, fans are concerned about this, fair enough, because one of the, I guess, points of difference for Dead or Alive, or the unique qualities of Dead or Alive, uh, is the sexualization, the sexy characters, the ridiculous breast physics, all of that stuff, the absolute nonsense that got the game franchise got up to with regards to sexualization was a big part of the appeal of it. And of course, it's quite obvious that the co team at Koei Tecmo are trying to broaden the horizons of Dead or Alive. They're trying to find new audiences for it. They're trying to take the game into that very top tier of fighting game, which is about as mainstream, obviously, as fighting games get. And to do that, they need to not offend anybody. They need to have the most broad audience possible. They need to have all kinds of people playing the game, all kinds of people loving the game. They need to see the game in esports. They need to be sharing it on Twitch and all of that kind of stuff. It, it just needs to happen. So... From a development point of view, it's quite obvious that the team would have felt the pressure to really tone down on that controversial element, the sexuality, the sexuality, in order to find the maximum audience and to make sure that the game gets the same kind of coverage on release that Tekken and Street Fighters and all those kinds of games get. Um, now, we haven't seen too much of the game, so we don't really know beyond what's in the trailer and that one quote. But just based on that, I'm going to express, I guess, some concerns with the direction of Dead or Alive in this video. And probably by the time, you know, within a week from now, once we've seen more of it, a lot of these comments will probably be um, invalid. But this is, again, just based purely on the announcement and that IGN article. The thing about Dead or Alive is, whether it's controversial or not, whether you love it or hate it or not, that sexuality is a big part of the the tone of the game is a big part of the heritage of the game and is a very big part of what makes this game different to other fighting games. Um, where, you know, when you look at the other 3D fighting games like uh, Tekken and you know, Street Fighter and all that kind of stuff, you look at those games and you say, you know, where is this one different? How is Dead or Alive a different game? And it is because of those you know, ridiculously beautiful characters, the ridiculous breast physics, the ridiculous costumes, all of that stuff is part of the Dead or Alive identity. And if you take that Dead or Alive identity away, what are you left with? You're left with a fighting game, which re needs to then go and find its own identity all over again, because all of a sudden it's not what the Dead or Alive fans recognize. So you need to resell the game to them. At the same time, the people who have never played Dead or Alive before also need to be introduced to it. So you're basically starting from scratch. And I'm not sure that's the right direction for this game to go. I think Dead or Alive was already quite popular and there were a lot of people that found the sexuality and uh, the satire to be in good spirit and certainly didn't mind it. They, you know, they had a laugh at it, they played it, and then they realized that the mechanics of the game were actually quite strong as well. And a lot of people really got into fighting games because of that. I'm one of them. I found I came to Dead or Alive because I thought it was an amusing kind of fan servicey jokey game. 
but then I found that I really enjoyed the game, and since then I've really got into fighting games as a genre. So Dead or Alive will always be my kind of favourite, or at least the earlier Dead or Alive will always be my kind of favourite as an introduction to the point where I started to you know play a lot more of these fighters. And of course a lot of Dead or Alive was controversial. There were a lot of articles written about it. It was really on the periphery of the fighting game scene and all of that kind of stuff. I get that and I get the developer's desire to do away with that. But what they've put instead is a more gritty kind of violent bloody sense of action. And that as well doesn't sit particularly well with me. The thing about Dead or Alive and all of the Dead or Alive games is they are fundamentally satirical in nature. They are hilarious. They are silly. They are nonsense. They are satire. And you might not appreciate that satire, and that's fine. You don't have to enjoy the game. But that is the point. They are satirical. And to then replace it with this kind of uh, more gritty, realistic violence does not sit well with me because that is no longer satire. Uh, Mortal Kombat does... Uh, satirical violence, but the, this Dead or Alive game is going nowhere near that kind of realm. This is just violence because it's a fighting game and there needs to be kind of, you know, a bit of blood here and there and bruising and all that kind of stuff. And it's definitely doesn't get, I don't, from that trailer anyway, I don't get the sense that this is a satirical game, this Dead or Alive 6. And without the satire, putting aside the fan service, without the actual satire itself, you're looking at a very different kind of fighting game. Uh, and a lot of the charm of Dead or Alive, a lot of the reason that I can play it with my wife and she enjoys it or I can play it with friends, a lot of the reason, a lot of the community is built around that sense of nonsense and fun and satire that Dead or Alive offers. And people who don't particularly like more gritty fighting games, more realistic fighting games, more complex fighting games, people who don't like Tekken or whatever, can pick up Dead or Alive and have a really good time with it. So Koei Tecmo is kind of leaving all of those people behind to chase what you have to assume is people who would never have played a Dead or Alive game beforehand and whether the Dead or Alive fans come along with them or not remains to be seen. Now in saying that, we don't know how things are going to go with DLC and I can't for the life of me see how Koei Tecmo would look at the success of the DLC costumes that they had with Dead or Alive 5 and the success of Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball and say to themselves, hey look, you know, we we're just going to give up on all of that. There are almost definitely going to be a lot of DLC costumes. And it just remains to be seen whether it's like the base game is that kind of gritty, more serious tone, different Dead or Alive, and then they look to put the satire and the humor in through the DLC, or whether this is really a completely different chapter for Dead or Alive and whether I'm going to be on board with it or not uh, remains to be seen, I guess. We won't actually get to play the game until 2019, um, but I will say that if it plays as well as Dead or Alive 5, that's great, but if it's going to have this more serious, gritty, dark tone to it without any kind of satire and without the fan service to lighten the mood, I'm not sure I'll be quite as on board with this next one. Anyway, fingers crossed for more details soon.